This week, we're going to be talking about Conrad Thompson. And you know what? Given his actions lately, I'd say it's more like Con Lame Thompson. Whoa! Hot day! Hot day! Oh, 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 you, you, you. A guy who honestly... As far as riding the coattails of wrestlers, he really was like, he reminds me of those like, you know, those dudes in the 80s where it'd be like, yeah, there was this guy who used to always just drive us from the airport and he was just a fan and he was pumped. He turned that around on every wrestler because he was the dude who would just like, hey, hey, Rick, I'll give you this loan, but we're starting a podcast. And now he has a podcast empire. And essentially, you clearly know that like basically made his whole podcast empire off of yeah rick flair uses people but he's not very good at it and you better believe i'm not no, only no, no, in no, your no, family no, 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 now no, but i'm going to do a podcast till You're the day correct. you die rick okay. flair is very good at using people rick flair is very stupid rick flair is like i'm going to use this guy mm. to get 18 bucks i i need this guy to <laughs> buy me some like gator shoes rick flair is a that guy uh like it's always gator- sunny episode with uh with roddy piper yeah i'll train you front to back do a match and how much will that cost you Forty dollars. <laughs> yeah, it's also the thing of, I guarantee Ric Flair has no furniture. Like I guarantee Ric oh, Flair's yeah. house sucks because you walk in and you're like, "Where's everything?" And he's like, "Woo, wearing it, baby!" Woo, 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 woo. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. No one calls his ex-wife Cleo, as in Cleopatra, without like just being a fucking maniac. Like Conrad Thompson. Here's the thing with Conrad Thompson. We've met Conrad Thompson before. Stand up has it too. It's the guy who wasn't very good at stand-up, but then is like, I'll just run some shows. And then guess what that guy becomes? That guy just becomes a guy with hundreds of thousands of dollars in the successful career because no one wants to get into stand-up comedy to become uh, an agent until they're like, oh, I can't do this. But you know what else? I What I can definitely do is just be an agent because none of these comedians know what they're doing. They literally yeah. don't know what they're doing. They have no organizational skills. But I'm sorry, I was just looking that up where you were uh, uh, talking apologies. But Ric Flair and his most recent wife very much split up. And that pretty much timed with Conrad Thompson starting a new podcast with Ric Flair, which is a nice thing where it's like my father-in-law just split up from his Wait a wife. Minute. He, he, he split up. He, Ric Flair split up with Fifi? With Wendy Barlow. Yes, Fifi's gone. No. I, which is, I mean, what is Ric Flair? What is Ric Flair like? Like, he's still cheating at 72? Oh, yeah, he is. Keep the gimmick alive. Oh, you know. He, but he's also, what did he, What I bet you it is, um, uh, is I bet you he just goes to prostitutes. Like, he just openly is just like, That's probably woo, I need $1,800, Wendy. Uh, why, Rick? Woo going to get my ass eaten by a tiger i guarantee it's that's the sale like i'm gonna go get a prostitute but then what actually happens is he just sits in a room with them and talks about how yeah he's uh, like do you do you know david do you know david do you know david's phone number (laughs) that's pretty much i fucking hate rick flair i'm sorry if i buy prostitutes then i can tell people we had sex that's what that is. is a fucking loser little fuck get him I will get him, big. Dylan. It's just big, though. so sad. Ric Flair, Fuck you, you got the, the best wrestling retirement, and Vince McMahon would have just given you money if you just like hung mm-hmm. out, but he's like, no, I got to live the gimmick. I got I to make sure that everyone knows that I am having unprotected sex in loafers. And it also says a lot that the NWA, when they were handed Ric Flair at the Wrestling at the Chase thing, Ric Flair did an A-ring promo, and the NWA was like, we're going to use this guy once. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like, He should... One thousand percent be, and that might be a price thing, but like one thousand percent, Ric Flair should be like, "Hey, you know, there's all this crazy shit happening in the NWA. You know, two thousand one hits. Ric Flair is the break in case of once every three months, Jack Tunney, general manager. Like Shawn Michaels was in the Attitude Era. We of just course, come out. the absolute best use of an authority figure in wrestling ever is just." What the hell is a... There's a man on pills wearing a t-shirt from his wrestling school here in a cowboy hat. What's he going to do? Well, they filmed it in a bar because that's where the only place he'd agree to go. <laughs> <laughs> but we but should talk about Con that, Lame Thompson. We're going to talk about Con Lame Thompson. But here's the thing I just want to say about <laughs> Conrad Thompson is Conrad Thompson is Bad. just it's just just smart and also the most important in, person in wrestling in the last 10 years. He literally created that's a true. new industry for wrestling legends. Like, without him, we wouldn't have some classic weird podcasts. For example, the Kevin Sullivan podcast, which if you guys aren't listening to, you have not realized that Kevin really Sullivan does to. not remember his, his life. I mean, 
That was going to happen. These guys are all cokehead, roided up pill addicts, and everyone's like, hey, what happened on December 13th, not 14th, 1978? Well, this is the and thing. then you just watch, like, I don't know, two cool Let's Scorpio trace the be rise like, um. Of Conrad Thompson. And can I can tell you, the, the first error he made comes so early. I'll tell you where it is. Okay, let's start. Let's start with, so Conrad Thompson, he's a guy who loves mortgages and business. He's just an entrepreneur. He's from a family that like believes in entrepreneurial spirit. So there's a guy, sorry to cut you off, um, but there's a guy who did stand up for like eight seconds in Canada like this. And it's, it's, it's a level that we for sure being you applied to the art of stand-up comedy which was hey i want to learn how to do this who's good at it we'll just yeah. ingest every single thing about it and the dude i forgot the guy's name uh his name is tay moore and um anyway he uh he's like a independently wealthy now because when he was 20 like when you know we were like hey i'm gonna work at a coffee shop and be a high functioning alcoholic and learn how to do stand-up he was like I'm going to read everything Warren Buffett had to say, which is what Conrad Thompson did, and put it into practice. I want you to know something right now. I was not functioning. Okay. John would come on stage fully erect and say, in, they'll call this Me Too in a couple of years, but right now it's yeah, who yeah, wants yeah. to. Hey, do you guys know what Louis C.K. gets up to? Because you will. You will. And I think you'll like it. That's what I said. I really misjudged what the Me Too era was going to be about. I thought people was just going to be very I thought we'd accepted. be applauded for it. Yeah. Why'd I buy all these potted plants then? I have heard, I heard something a few days ago at an open mic. Uh, by the way, LA open micers, post COVID LA open micers are the best because they were not, they were all what I was when I was 20, plus the internet, plus just being so like, I got to make it. I'm in LA. And I just heard one of them go, here's what I don't understand about the whole Louis CK situation. Why didn't, why didn't anyone point out he was funny? He was funnier than those women. And I was just like, Jesus Christ. Here we go. It's taken five years for someone to say exactly what three of my friends have been saying in their heads the whole time. Yeah. No well, PA like, ever made me laugh. Well, I know it's not the same thing whatsoever because of the severity, but it's not like Johnny Crocker and the OJ trial was like, yo, 2,000 yards in 14 games, guy? Who cares who we killed? And I mean, the I audience, bet you, and then the judges were like, OJ That's wanted dope, to point bro. that out. He's like, should I bring, Johnny, should I bring my Heisman to the trial? Because I hey, have it in the jail cell. I have Buffalo Bills, me. no passing game. Yeah. We didn't have a winning record. Everyone knew where the fucking ball was going. 2,000 fucking yards. Your Honor, I've met Bob Costas more times than I can count. And if Bob Costas isn't on trial for murder, then no one should be. Yeah, exactly. Two, let's forget about 2,000 yards. Naked gun. Yeah. It doesn't matter what I do. Let's forget about let's I'm forget a legend about naked gun. Let's forget about naked amazing. gun and let's yeah. remember those Hertz commercials that some oh, yeah. people thought were good. Hey, you know what? He was the first uh, African American pitch man for a lot of products too. Anyway, that's our case for why OJ didn't uh, do it. Also, is that he did, uh, but also, also it's great cool. nickname. Here's another reason why OJ should have been the juice. acquitted. The first it's true. Thing. His name is Orenthal James Simpson. The juice. Come on. That's good. There's I nothing... would have called him Orny. Honestly. I, I understand why a lot of people didn't want to accept his that he did. Had been Orny Simpson, Orny. there would have been no trial, no nothing. Put that Orny, man in Orny. jail. Horny Orny, and for sure. Horny Orny definitely murdered his wife. OJ, I don't know. Yeah, the, jo the juice, I don't think so. He's freshly squeezed. Isn't oh, that buddy. Orange Cassidy? That guy did it. Orange Cassidy did it. Oh, maybe that'll be a storyline. Very yeah, well loved, exactly. and then he killed He's from Brentwood, and he just nearly decapitated a woman with a knife. Mm-hmm. He dissed yeah. all his old friends. Anyway, I've just started watching OJ Made in America again, and I forgot. <laughs> it it's a very good documentary. Ah, uh, yes. Dylan is very much cut from the same cloth Six as me. I care a lot about the things episodes. that I'm watching at the time. True crime that actually matters is not just like Bill from fucking Sheboygan murdered his wife. I know, exactly. I uh, This is why I always get upset when true crime people are like, uh, we don't talk about the mafia. And I'm like, you should. The mafia is so much more interesting than like, I can't get boners. So now I'm going to wear this man's face as my face. It's like uh, there were Nerd eight alert. of them and they all didn't. They just all hired an FBI agent to check to see if there was a wire in their clubhouse while discussing that this was their clubhouse. And then the, the FBI agent just put the wire in, and they were like, that's good. we got to trust this guy. He's got glasses. Here's, a, here's something that – here's a joke that I did a million years ago that never worked, but there was a mob guy named Sally Fields. That was his nickname. And then he was nicknamed that during the era where Sally Fields was like a sex symbol. 
So, like, how much does it suck to, like, do all this badass shit? Because, like, he got his name because he buried so many people in a field. And then it's and like, man. His name was Salvatore? Yeah, exactly. So, you imagine you're a mobster and you kill a bunch of people. And, like, let's say it's, like, you're an Italian mobster and you're in mm. a war with Hispanic gang. And so and you kill this large guy like, haha, we're going to call you. Uh, what's your name? Um, what's your name? I don't know. Our loves. Andreas. All right. We're calling you Ariana Grande. Hopefully. No, God. No. I think you just now. keep the name. I did not know what celebrity you were going for. That was the longest walk. Long to walk. A... Oh, come on. I could have gone with Andreas. Yeah. I was I'm just trying to say something here. I'm trying to say Conrad Thompson. Thank you for letting us do ads on your show, but now we're going to make fun of you because we haven't paid for one in a while. Yeah, it's also, I mean, like, we're not making fun of him. We're just saying what he did in his life. He read everything Warren Buffett had to say, using the housing crash. You just advertised for more mortgages because people were still buying houses. Yeah, so the Warren Buffett thing is be greedy whenever, when others are fearful, which basically housing crisis happens. No one, no one is fucking with the housing market, obviously. Conrad Thompson spends a ton of fucking money on advertising during that time, and that's how he makes his way. And yeah. and advertising specifically to wrestling fans for, like, what is it, almost 10 years now has also been a boon for his mortgage business, which I is mean, insane. I mean, it's 2016 is when – 2015, 2016 is when uh, – Well, I was – no, what I was counting the uh, original Ric Flair Woo Nation podcast, which is how he got into it, was in 2013. That that is true. So, yeah, so that's nine years ago. So the Woo Nation is how he gets into it. How he got into that was he is obviously a giant wrestling and sports memorabilia nerd with a huge amount of a disposable income because he lives in fucking Huntsville, Alabama. And no offense to the people of Huntsville, Alabama, but your property is cheap. Is it? And Let's see how cheap it is. Huntsville. Well, I know, that, I know that Conrad over COVID convinced Shuley from the Howard Stern show to move to Huntsville. How was that? I mean... So I'm searching homes for uh, Huntsville, Alabama here. How are you going to do? Is this going to be like you're planning to move to that small town in Canada? Because you're like, I can buy a house in cash. I'm going. I, we can't, I can't buy a house in Huntsville. Uh, I'm looking at the houses here. And uh, I see one. Uh, I see one for 120. Um, there's one to 160. Yeah. Uh, but a lot of you can get like a mortgage. 300. We could get we got we got we could do this. Let's Patreon to buy a wrestler review house in uh, Huntsville, Alabama. I see a house for eighty five thousand dollars and it's eight hundred and forty square feet, which is not not the most square footage I've seen. I, that's true. Also, but it's still a house and you're in Alabama. So you know what that means? Magnolia Terrace, fifteen hundred square feet, four bedrooms, two baths. That is one hundred and seventy nine thousand. That's not. Bad. I mean, you live in Toronto. What are you getting for one hundred and seventy nine thousand in Toronto? You know what you're getting? You're getting a fucking a Cyprian man comes over, spits in your mouth and goes, give me money. <laughs> yeah, I guess the equivalent would legit be probably like three hundred G's. Yeah, you're getting you're not getting a fucking one bedroom condo for that in the six. Yeah, you're getting you're, you're getting punched down. in the dick. You're getting a boat yeah. that's that's dra that's sunk for three hundred grand in in Canada. Here's the other thing also with Toronto is that all of the houses, it's such a disparate. This is the thing with buying houses and why I'm against it is because tell me it's it should be a same across the board. It's insane. They're like, well, I'm in New York, so it costs eleven billion dollars for a fucking I, this is just rat, rat, mad ranting. I just I'm like, I hate it. I hate it. I wish I could just. Go. I mean, yeah, we're fucked. We became comedians and we're millennials. We're fucked. We can't own property unless we give up what we want to do with our lives. I'm also like, fine not. O I'm also fine not owning property. I know people with houses and how stressful it is. And like, seems bad. I got bed bugs this year, and you know what I did? I just left. I left my house. I left my house for four months, and I just refused to pay rent. And you know yeah, what my landlord You're a free did? man on the land, buddy. You're fucking straight. That's up right. I am a free dream. man of the land. Your libertarian dream, or it's me. It's like if I get bed bugs, I just like what am I gonna do? Fucking hey, kids, let's live in the ditch. <laughs> yeah, I assume. If, well, if you get bed bugs, the first thing that happens is Dylan just doesn't uh, just stares forward for a while, does not acknowledge it, does not. You will not acknowledge it. And oh, then I have to acknowledge it. My wife will fucking try and burn down the house. And well, this like, is well, the this thing. Is is you then we'll immediately have to switch to uh, dealing with the problem because your wife will Molotov cocktail the mattress. <laughs> ah! Oh yes, it'll be it'll be bad. The, Explain, the whole house Cody, will fit the into way, a dryer. I, when I had bed bugs, I had to speak to Dylan's wife because I was coming over to meet their goodly son. 
And his wife had so many specific questions about bed bugs, some of which are not rooted in the reality of bed bugs, but are just things that someone who is worried about bed bugs then just lives with the knowledge of. No, yes. Bed bugs are very much like herpes where it's like, oh, yeah, you could have had bed bugs your whole life and no one's ever told you, but you have them. It's like a lot of it is um, just fear. Like it's just yeah. fe it's just fear. It's like COVID. Yeah, it, not uh, real. Invented by the government. George bedbugs. Soros, we're coming for you, you bedbug covered son of a bitch. Do you know who else took Ooh. advantage of an opportunity? Little man named Comrade Thompson, who, wanting to add to his memorabilia wall, purchased a Ric Flair robe, decided to get himself a gold belt made to accompany it, because good God, you cannot that came give... with Ric Flair. For me? That came with Ric Flair. That yeah. Along with that gold belt, he got Ric Flair, Ric Flair. the man. <laughs> This is the, this was, by the way, the moment where I was like, Ric Flair is the saddest man on the planet. Oh, dude. All right. I'm going to look up to, and this is great. This is classic wrestler review. You do some stuff. I'm going to look up when that Ric Flair Grantland article was, because that was, that was the article, the wrestler in real life. So that's 2011. Conrad's yeah, buying this shit the... in 2009. So Conrad's probably one of the people who's implicated. I'm going to actually control F for Conrad Thompson in this article, but it's like. Well, no, he would be afterwards because basically what it is is Rick has burned all of his old friends yeah. and business representatives in this period of time because this is when, like, this, like, culminates in him nearly dying from drinking and this mm. is when Reed passes away. Like, yeah. this is when it gets so fucking dark for Ric Flair because it's a guy who has never, ever been responsible for any of his actions ever. And then a bunch of things where it's like, you need to actually deal with this. Like this Reed, is Reed Flair died in 2013. So he did not die around the time. Oh my God. Grant is that true? So this was, Oh my God. I thought this that is was just so a guy much. who's living his gimmick. So yeah. So this is even, so, Oh my God, it gets so much sadder after this. Wait a minute. So well, he, he lives for one wound. thing. Here's he the lives one for thing one you thing. should never do is if your son dies, you're not allowed to start a podcast for two years. I, that's my rule. <laughs> I think I think if someone was like, I'm going to start a podcast and they were grieving their young son, I'd probably be like, okay, man. <laughs> I mean, I would, but I'm not releasing it. Did you ever listen yeah, yeah, to yeah. Woo Nation? It is. I did listen to Woo Nation. And once again, uh, Woo Nation was mostly like, remember when Biloxi, when we got our cock sucked? It Jeanette? wasn't, though. <laughs> it was it was. Well, I remember because we listened to it for, fuck, who did we do? We did an episode of some old wrestler early on in this podcast where like the only recorded thing they had ever done is an episode of Woo Nation. And then oh, Ric Flair did the thing that my grandmother used to do, which was he'd be like, remember in Biloxi when we got those two girls up to the room? And the guy's like, Haha, yeah. And he's like, you seen, you seen Luger? He's really sick. He just started talking about who's sick, which yeah, is what of old course. people talk about. Because like Ric Flair has nothing else. It's so sad because all that Ric Flair has is Conrad Thompson. 2013, Ric Flair, well, his son is dead. his entire family, and now his entire family is a dude who he sold a robe to fucking 12 Yeah, years, his entire family is a dude he sold a robe to who he married off to his oldest daughter, who, and, and by the way, off. Conrad Thompson won't tell the story of how he met his wife publicly because it involves Ric Flair, and he's like, it's the greatest Ric Flair story ever. And you're like, the story is Rick tried to fuck his own daughter because he was drunk and Conrad <laughs> stopped it. And then uh, Megan Flair was like, well, that's how I meet my husbands. I guarantee Conrad, because Conrad, um, clearly this dude loves work because he works as a mortgage guy and then also does like, essentially he's Monday to Friday, he's mortgage man. And then on the weekend is when he does like nine podcasts. So I guarantee this guy, because he has gotten bigger over the course of these podcasts. And I guarantee it's like, not even the work. It's just the amount of secrets Ric Flair's told him that yeah. he just has to like eat his feelings. In the middle of the Kurt wife, Angle show, Kurt wife. Angle being like, we better take that out. And he's like, the part where you talked about just killing a dog to feel alive in the middle of Orlando. No, 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 no. Leave that in. Um, just the thing about me thinking that Dave Schultz could have beat me in the Olympics. <laughs> take that out. Take Schultz that the fuck out. Conrad, take that out. Uh, Mark Schultz. Do you have any Perkadan? Conrad, I know his... we're not in the same state. Do you have any Perkadan? It's me, Kurt Angle. <laughs> Just fucking call a fucking fake prescription into the this pharmacy. You fucking, you better fucking do it. Anyway, yeah, are you doctor? Podcasts. Doctors have podcasts. Do but every, this is the every interesting thing. Podcast. So, 2012, uh, Conrad obviously buys the Ric Flair robe. Yeah. Um, he gets a replica belt. 
and it ignited his uh, love of wrestling. And here's how, I guess, small the wrestling community is. Thompson's interest in podcasting began after meeting ECW wrestler Shane Douglas, who Thompson met after pledging a significant amount of money to a crowdfunding drive for a documentary about ECW, which is like, if you're a dude with business sense and money, you dude, are you stay now away you're from in wrestling. Any documentary about ECW in the yeah. 2010s. Because that is just... Oh, yeah, because that was after Forever Hardcore, right? Yeah, this is after Forever Hardcore. This was when Shane Douglas did one really successful um, hardcore homecoming show mm -hmm. and then still is trying to do um, other wrestling shoot interview. Like, it's still trying to make, like, ECW sort of thing. It's so sad. Yeah, I mean, Forever Hardcore is an ECW documentary from 2005. And that Jeremy Borash was very much involved. And you can, t and even Jeremy Borash is like, we're not selling any more of these because it's just up on YouTube now. Yeah, so, yeah, Forever Hardcore is the ECW documentary, clearly. And, um, yeah, I mean, this I can't find anything about this Shane Douglas. Like, so, basically, he got a private screening um with conrad and met conrad at his house it was a positive experience thompson approached jim cornett oh with an offer of fifteen hundred dollars to come to his house and tell stories for a couple hours and then douglas and cornett vouched for him and then that led to the rick flair show which was if you've listened to woo nation conrad isn't in it Really? It's just Conrad's just there, kind of, as like a yeah, producer? Yeah, he's like a co-host, and occasionally will like come up with this, or like, there is one part of the U Nation that I will never forget. It is one of the most alarming and, and fucking very fucked up things you would say to someone else, which is, he's talking about friendship with, I think it was Jim Cornette on the Wu, Na on Wu Nation, or Steve mm -hmm. Austin, and he's like, there is one way to know who your friend is. And that is when you are in a tough situation and you need something. And that something is money. And the people that give you money, those are your friends. Conrad is my, and Conrad is one of those people. That is why he's my friend. And I'm like, Rick, you just said, you want to know how you become my friend? Give me cash. This guy gave me cash. He is my friend. You're like, wow, that's, that's bad. Crazy. But that's how Ric Flair works. It's only um, transactional. transactional. Yeah. It's crazy. Anyway. I like that this is more or less like breaking down. But anyway, Conrad Thompson, um, clearly good with money and one of the guys. We don't know that. Hang on. We do not know that. It He could be good with money or he could be just like, I got to keep the money coming in because it's always going out because I'm paying for Tony Schiavone's massages. He has a man. He has a like a huge. Again, you're getting this from wrestlers. Wrestlers are fucking liars and are all going to take advantage of people. Bruce Prichard is the number one liar and taker. Bruce Prichard is literally, could be like, Vince, you have dementia and your voice sounds insane. Stop booking commentators to do prestige matches at WrestleMania. We look like fucking dorks. But instead he's like, you did it again. Can I still have a job? I'm your son. Bruce is Vince's boy. Let me be in your balls. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, you're right, though. It is very, very difficult to tell um, what is what is and what isn't with uh, Conrad Thompson. And this is crazy because, like, this is the era we're in where I've listened to a couple episodes of, like, stuff about Joe Rogan. on, And, and like, we have to, like – it's so much harder to, like, track the evolution of someone's podcast because, like, they'll never jump from thing to thing. The podcast just keeps going because it's such, a, like, an intimate – like, it's way harder to lose podcast listeners than anything else because you feel like you know, obviously, if you're listening to this, you probably listened for 600 years, but it's like, you feel like you know the people. And yeah, you can go through, like, I've definitely gone in and out of listening to podcasts, but I always go, like, back. You know what I mean? Anyway. Well, there's also, like, it's a, a direction or a turn they take. It's also sometimes you're just like, all right, I've heard enough of this fucking shit. Like, yeah, and that's the thing where, I mean, Hobson gets into this, too, in the research, which is an editorial that I'll pass along, which is, like, they change how their show is we're like we kind of like uh, like we kind of like switch between being fucking annoying morning show hosts with bobo jokes and then like editorializing yeah and what we, all you way, wanted have been, we have been doing that since the beginning we've been this we've been ourselves was, for the beginning yeah this entire show was two people we're like we're gonna research we're gonna keep it serious let's present wrestling 
properly and within 30 seconds is like do you want to know why the referee didn't make that count because he was peeing <laughs> but we also don't there's very little other wrestling podcast that will be like let's actually reference that aj styles thinks the earth is flat yeah that's the other thing <laughs> just because you're like every move is sick doesn't mean you like th thinking gay people shouldn't get married is bad <laughs> yeah also like newsflash rick flair the plane ride from hell was particularly hellish because you kept making a woman try and touch your hard dick. Mm -hmm. So was, the Undertaker. I would say that's the worst. The Kurt Angle and Brock Lesnar, or sorry, Brock Lesnar and Mr. Perfect wrestling around isn't as bad as, hey, I'm gonna make you touch my cock. Yeah, I'm no, 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 no. And again, I have to. It's not a soft cock. Oh. Hard cock. Conrad, Which is... let me tell you something. Woo, Woo! Shave that beard and touch my dick. Real yes, <laughs> Not gay. Not gay if she doesn't have a beard. Woo! Ooh. Rick Flair. So oh, the first oh, s completely oh, sane oh. person. Keep in mind, Shane Douglas is trying to make an ECW documentary that I guarantee was just him front facing on a cell phone telling about how yeah, he yeah, kicked yeah. the shit out of new jack then he meets jim Cornette, fi pays fifteen hundred dollars for jim Cornette to tell stories about how like tracy smothers should have actually wore extra confederate flags why is why is jim Cornette angry if i had one day where someone was like come to my house here's fifteen hundred bucks tell me stories i'd be like he's also rich life's worked out that's the other thing is it's like he's he's got nothing to lose which Jim like, Cornette or Conrad Thompson? Both. Like, they're both incredibly rich. They're pretty rich guys. Like, Jim, Jim Cornette, Cornette, especially, like, yeah. is like, Jim Cornette is comes from, from like, affluence. That, yeah, that character comes, is not a character. It's like he comes from affluence. He's just pissed off for some reason. Yeah, he's just a spoiled guy. His, wife, his mom, like, really looked after him. Mm -hmm. And it's Which also is like, the whole character. Vince McMahon, or. Con Again, Jim Cornette's dream was, I'm going to be a wrestling manager. And then he took photos for a couple of years and then lived his whole dream. So I guess that's crazy that, like, if you want to take wrestling photos, you're either a fucking super creep, Paul Heyman, or Jim Cornette. And, and but what's even better is they hate each other. What's a, more amazing is Conrad Thompson is the next wave of that, but within podcasting. And Conrad Thompson was smart enough because wrestling fans are kind of rats that he has cornered the market of this. So from Woo Nation, Bruce Pritchard comes on to, and they end up talking about the radicals. Ric Flair doesn't really talk, and it's uh, Bruce Pritchard and Conrad going back and forth. This leads to Bruce Pritchard starting the Something to Wrestle podcast, and the original old episodes of Something to Wrestle are truly fucking fascinating and fantastic. Can I say this, though? These are silver bullets. That's what they said about shoot promos. That's what they said about the pipe bomb promo. Silver bullets are, you can only do them once in a while. There was obviously going to be a point where Bruce Pritchard telling it like it fucking is about WWE back then. Like, you're just going to run out of that. Like, there's yeah. only so many times you can tell it like it is. And then, like, the first episode is exactly what you're saying. He was so mad about, like, what Dave Meltzer had reported and everything that you could sense it. And he really, it was a good listen because he's... A, he's mad at the internet and the internet wrestling fan before everyone else is. So he's kind of like a contrarian in a way that, like, didn't really have a voice to that point. That's and a also, point. a very, very good thing is Conrad is basically playing the I'm the Dave Meltzer fan. I'm talking to the guy who runs WWE or used to run WWE, and I get to air a lot of your concerns. Which no one had really done and and wrestlers need a straight man because then you just get only wrestling slant where conrad's like okay i'm like a man too i'm not gonna fucking yeah hang on one second i'm going to turn something up this is a new mic and i think it's picking up something that it should be picking up There we go. You're exactly right about Conrad and the role he filled in that moment and that he was exactly like the anti-internet wrestling fan, wrestling fan. And what, again, though, but that's not why anyone listened. Why anyone listened was it was a bunch of stories from as close to Vince McMahon as we've ever gotten. And so suddenly why we were intrigued in a way that we've never been more intrigued in our life. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah.
Well, this was like the guy behind the curtain. Exactly, you said it. access to Vince McMahon as a way. Everyone had only told stories about Vince McMahon, and Dave Lagana had a podcast about it where he was like a writer. There was all these, and that's the other thing in the aughts, uh, before 2010, and kind of previous to this too. There were all these podcasts where guys were writers on, and that would that those did great numbers, and they met Vince McMahon very like briefly. That's so this true. Guy, and that can actually create like a portrait of what the guys actually like. It's also, it was very much golden era WWE stuff, which we weirdly like attitude era yeah. has really been picked over. And the NWA really is weirdly been picked over, but there's a lot of stuff like around the steroid era that no one knew about because they fucking kept that shit on lock. You know what I mean? Like he's like, I'm not, we're not going to talk about that sort of stuff because it was Vince McMahon's moment. It's like, like they just weren't aware because you had to have been like one of Vince's inner circle to know that stuff. Bruce was very much in the inner circle. And at the time, no longer in the fold in any way. Cause he brought a mm -hmm. gun to the office. Never forget. Brought a gun to the office and totally. And he talked, to, and he talked about that. And he also, I think it doesn't get, it doesn't get said enough. Like a lot of people have negative, like Meltzer has some shit to say about Bruce Richard, where it's like Bruce is lying um cornet kind of has some backward shit to say about bruce Pritchard. the one thing you can't really well, what do you always well, well cornet's problem is he always sides with vince he's always on vince's side and he's sort yeah, of vince's he's fucking... yes man yeah Which is like yeah no shit bud yeah he's here he's trying to keep a job fucko exactly but then you get the whole thing where it's like conrad gets to like yell at and there's a lot of moments from that early podcast that i don't think stick out to a lot of people like like they were like at, at the the revelation or the uh, the reveal that like well the now deceased Scott Hall in those segments where Austin tied up the NWO and shot beer at Scott Hall that was real beer yeah because and well, he was an alcoholic it. yeah what are you doing and he was and taking he the medicine drinking. where it's like as soon as you drink beer you puke so he puked a bunch and then when Conrad Thompson said basically like don't you think that should have been fake beer and then I. Bruce Pritchard said he was like, "No, that's a pussy. Just don't be a pussy." Essentially. I mean, that was the one of the most. And then wild. they, they, then no one, and it didn't matter. And then once that, once that came out, I was like, "Well, this doesn't. This is like, this is what wrestling is. Like, you know, they just don't make people stick to shit. This is why. <laughs> this is why you can have fucking mid south, which is like J Jim Ross rolling joints, having a good time, leading towards his divorce." And, you know, Ernie Ladd hanging out, but then the rest of the people are just racist pedophiles. <laughs> Here's my question. Um, after the break, mm -hmm. do you want to talk about when something to wrestle sort of stopped being really good? Yes. I mean, the, you can pinpoint that very easily, yeah. The expansion of Ad Free, uh, the Ad Free Shows Network. You, let's talk about let's talk about all the podcasts he's done and when we think he jumped when we think exactly it's and starcast jumped. and then we're done yeah i mean starcast is huge all right bye bye okay <laughs> okay so, all right so it's something to wrestle things yes. are moving things are happening Fuck. this fucking podcast was so big it basically wipes the pod the wrestling podcast format pioneered by cold cabana off the fucking planet like it is no longer do wrestling podcast fans want to hear Two wrestlers talking, they want to hear one wrestler telling all of their stories. So Jim Cornette already has... It doesn't wipe Jim it off Cornette. the planet because then you get... Shortly, Cabana clearly has the one last thing where it's like punk, the the big punk interview, obviously. And um, But this is what wrestling fans want. Wrestling fans yeah. are soap opera fans and they want to hear just the gossip. And that's what Bruce Pritchard gives them. Is just oh the boy, does he. He gives them so, 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 so much. so funny where he's like, here's what the rumors don't say. And it's kind of like, yeah, you're just like doing what Meltzer says too now. Do you, so when do you feel that something to wrestle kind of jumped to the shark? Mine's a weird one. Well, that's interesting. I mean, it's pretty clear to me. It's like when he goes back to WWE. See, I disagree entirely. When I think it was, was the first star cast. And when it's like all in, all out or all in and all that sort of stuff. But more importantly, it's when Tony Schiavone gets his show. What happened when? Because that's the first flaw in the format, and they shouldn't have kept doing that show. Because Tony they Schiavone... Write, they write the ship, though, because Tony Schiavone like, clearly doesn't know that much. 
or doesn't really remember that much because he has 900 kids. Where he's like, I don't know, man. Fucking, I think Ming was there. Stop asking me questions. I don't know. And Klondike Bill was there and he fucked someone and I watched. Nutted, and but then it's like, obviously, I, I think that was a good pivot by Conrad where he's like, okay, Tony Schiavone will just watch pay-per-views and be like, who the fuck is this loser? And it's like, okay, well, your, your wrestling's Bob Saget. I, it, and now he's just like digging for like everyone's tr- and then everyone. This is the thing about wrestling. This is the thing about anything entertainment. Everyone just started trying to do what Bruce Pritchard did immediately. So then that format was going to be. Oh, my God. It was so but it was just one of those things. But again, it, what it should have been if it was just he had just stuck to J.R. Bischoff and Pritchard. Those are the three guys. Yeah, I want to hear from. And yeah, by ta- the way, talent really like upper, uh, upper echelon guys. Exactly. And Eric Bischoff has a clips. I don't really enjoy like the problem also with all of those shows now is. The ads are oppressive. And we have, by the way, paid for ads. I understand that we are part of the problem. We have paid for ads. Stop working pro- because they would never be like, okay, we have enough ads this week. We're just going to roll you over to next week. It was like, no, no, keep going. Like, fucking. That's the thing is it's so many ads. And it's just it's hard to listen to because you're, you're in the story. Why I love them is I drive a shit. Like, I'll have to drive, especially like in those times I was on trains. And then when I first moved to the States, I was driving everywhere. And so you're just in a car for nine hours driving back from some gig because you can't afford to stay over. And you're like, all right, I'm going to bang through a bunch of Conrad Thompson and fucking Bruce Pritchard things. And I remember doing this in like 2019 and I put it on. Um, it was 2020. It was right before the pandemic. And I put I hadn't listened to it in like 18 months. And there was an ad every 12 minutes. And I was like, I, this is a storytelling podcast. I can't get into this. Yeah, that's true. 100 percent. Yeah. Do what we and- do. Come joke every 12 minutes. But there should be like if a if a max if something is an hour long you should have an ad every twenty minutes, right? Like, no, you should just have one hour. set of ads. What we do is fine. In the the everyone who listens to this program knows at thirty minutes around we're gonna take our break, which is where we just insert one thing, and then the back half of the episode continues. Yeah, and if you want to, you press skip ahead thirty seconds yeah. a couple times, and you don't hear the shit. Exactly, which I assume everyone does. Every podcast, yeah. as pioneered by Mark Maron, has to have the part you refuse to listen to. With Mark <laughs> Maron, it's that first nine minutes. But you got to make you Name make, me that's one so person funny. who's listened to more than one of those. Unless they are Mark Maron himself. I, I met people that think that's the best part of WTF, and that's insane to me. No, they, no, they're, yeah, no, they're aren't. Like, well, because the guy was like, oh, I have really high anxiety. So it's like he's like speaking directly to me. But if you don't have... I don't know, because I guess I don't have that high anxiety. So the guy was like, it's you do not. directly to me. No, Dylan, like, you not only no. do you not have any high anxiety, you you work very hard to try and have empathy for people with anxiety, but you're too busy just going, well, why don't you just not be a little bitch? Hey, it's like my mom. Well, don't worry about it then. Yeah. Here's, a, here's an idea. Talk, pay someone because I'm stopped listening. Well, this is the <laughs> why you shouldn't go to moms with advice because they're always like, listen, I raised like a bunch of kids, especially moms of our generation because their stories are always so much more intense. Your mom's story, I'm sure, is very intense. Mine, it's like, I was raising a kid and all these tragedies kept happening, but you know mm. what I did? Not paid attention to them, made a nice dinner. Yeah, exactly. You know what I did? I cooked the shit out of a casserole. Exactly. Put it all right. in the casserole. Do you want? Do you want to know what? You want to know why you millennials are fucked? Because you none of you know how to make a fucking tuna casserole when things get <laughs> tough. Pretty much, yeah. It, yeah. My mother-in-law is just beside herself that we don't like make Felix just like full lasagnas every day. <laughs> oh my why god! Why is it a bunch the, of fucking? It's the food greatest thing that baby other. boomers focus on on parenting. He's not having enough complex complex dyes. It's true. It's, true. it's like. <laughs> Why don't you just fucking him in the face with carbs every eight seconds? Yeah, uh, because my baby's keto. That's not true. Uh, excuse me. Why aren't you feeding him a lot of food and then commenting on his weight at the same time? Because oh, yeah, everyone knows buddy. that makes a stable human being. <laughs> so, uh, Conrad, fuck. Let's let's look up the when, because something that wrestle becomes this huge thing, and everyone wants, um, everyone wants in on conrad thompson's they start selling shirts every time bruce pritchard says a new thing there's a fucking goddamn shirt you know basically yeah uh, i had to like up their own ass with like how funny they are Um, i had to stop listening to it at a certain point because all of my impressions of wrestling people were just bruce pritchard's impressions of wrestling people and i was like Mm -hmm. we're not doing this yeah exactly and but like bruce pritchard the other thing is bruce pritchard had some pretty okay impressions and just like some and some shit that kids that, that had you uh, had you coming back, such as like um, Bruce Pritchard just maintaining that like oh no Vince always respected Dusty Rhodes that wasn't a you know 
That wasn't a direct shot at Dusty Rhodes. Even though it's it's one of those things where it's like it definitely it might not have been though, because I don't. But that would also show that he knew who Dusty Rhodes is is. And the more and more I'm like, I bet you he just didn't know who he was. You think so? Yeah. He just didn't know who Dusty Rhodes was. I mean, he would fucking headlined main events in the '70s with against superstar Billy Graham. Yeah, but there's no way Vince acknowledges or remembers that now. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I agree with what you're saying, but <laughs> you're so. you're like, well, that would involve memory, and I guarantee Vince was like, I was there. The main event was me. It was me but versus like, a Reuben sandwich in the back. But this is the other thing where it's like, um, what was it? All right, let's look at the last. Like, clearly he's. Out Are you of it cry? Now. Are you crying now? Uh, but. Are you crying? Bruce Richard's craziest moments was one of the last episodes where it's like, yeah, he just doesn't have enough time to record anymore. But obviously, um, I think Grilling Jr. is still good. Um, but the problem with Grilling Jr. is Grilling Jr. One of the co-hosts is Jim just so sad all the time. Well, yeah, of course he's sad. But the Jr. The like, Jr. is the level of like, stop recording this man and get him some fucking Vicodin. I don't know, make him happy. Jesus Christ. <laughs> so he uh he has Starcast which is like a big professional wrestling fan convention. Um this is weird too because they end up doing something to wrestle on the WWE network taping it for a second and then so immediately weird. stopping, but I yeah, guarantee because... that's what got Bruce Prichard his job back at WWE as a producer and whatever. I think it was that. I think it was also the numbers he was getting. I think it was also the fact that Stephanie stopped being involved cuz here's what I think it actually was. Oh, Stephanie stepped out, Bruce stepped in. Yeah, uh, Bru okay. Vince likes working with people he knows. Stephanie doesn't want to work with me anymore. Well, Shane, no. Okay, go get me Bruce. Like, I'm I'm sorry. Like, and it's also Stephanie Lee and Bruce clearly fucking hate each other. This is the other thing. They clearly do not like each other. And you can see that in that Bruce got in, started consolidating power, and suddenly Triple H has a heart attack and can fuck off. That's Bruce Pritchard, ladies and gentlemen. Bruce Pritchard is like, oh... You got me fired for bringing a gun to work? Well, you better wish I had brought that gun and shot you because I'm going to give you a heart attack instead. <laughs> what I'm saying is Bruce Pritchard injected an empty syringe of air into Triple H's foot before a big match, tried to kill him, didn't work. But that was part of his plan. It's crazy. that Bruce, And then Bruce Pritchard immediately is like, oh, I'm working at WWE, but don't worry. We're still going to have these podcasts regularly. And I think it was like the second episode. It's like Bruce Pritchard's now booking SmackDown, Raw, and has to tuck Vince into bed every night. And I was like, well, I don't know how these are going to. Yeah, that's very true. It's exactly. It's a um, well, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like you all to welcome uh, the uh, the star of something to wrestle with. And much less importantly the third biggest executive at one of the largest entertainment brands. Now he's told us this his podcast is his priority. Uh, but also he just got eight phone calls from a man who doesn't know what a burrito is. And he was shitting at the time. <laughs> exactly. He's pulling a full Lyndon Johnson. His dick was, out. Was he was talking about how big his dick was while shitting. Do you think that, uh, who do you think Bruce loves more his kids or Vince McMahon? Here's the answer. It's Vince McMahon. <laughs> It's a, it's a, when you're a careerist like that and you just keep on trying to pile shit on your plate, like something to wrestle is still going. Like they will not guarantee because he wants to keep it going. So it's like sick when I'll get fired and immediately everyone will listen to something to wrestle again because they'll want to hear me shoot on what fucking happened. That's dude, that's actually such a fucking smart point. You dumb bitch. Is that of course he would. Yeah. When he eventually gets fired because Bruce goes, Vince goes insane and fires him again. That podcast will make one billion dollars uh so we get obviously the shivani thing which quickly morphs into just watch alongs with tony shivani we get the 83 weeks with eric bischoff which was a big thing because you're like oh fuck is it going to be the same thing as pritchard but then you kind of do the math and you're like oh yeah bischoff was in control for like four years he could probably do like three sick episodes <laughs> and jim ross which was a really good shout jim ross had like a shoot podcast beforehand um and then you get the other ones, which are the Arn show. I don't know if the Kurt Angle show is still going. Jeff Jarrett one is like, Jeff Jarrett is too slippery to really be talked into a corner oh, man. like Bruce Jeff Richard Jarrett, is. I have to tell you, I think Jeff Jarrett made a mistake doing that podcast because Jeff Jarrett is really being himself and watching it as someone who's watched that man on television for so long. It's like, Oh, you weren't acting at all? That really came across? Holy shit, what is your what is it like to be married to you? 
Well, his dad is Jerry Jarrett, and I think that bears... I understand that. But I got news for you. Seeing Jeff on that podcast makes me be like, I got to tell you, Jerry Jarrett was right not to talk to this guy. Like, and I, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? They're like, this guy's a fucking ski. You know what he had? He has real comedian who started a show at a lounge in a weird part of Toronto in 2011. Do you know what I'm talking about, Dylan? Do you know exactly? Mm-hmm. Like, the kind of guy who's like, buddy, this one's going to be free next one. We're all getting a thousand bucks. And you see that girl over there? She's going to suck our dicks and give us Jamaican patties. And you're like, none of that's going to happen, man. But somehow you've convinced a guy named Matt that it is. That's exactly how he comes across. Oh, yeah. He just gets everyone to work for as much. Also, he clearly only bought one nice suit jacket, which is that black and white one he wore for the Hall of Fame. Because he will, he thinks he looks so good in that jacket. The amount of different photos of him in that fucking jacket that are on the internet are insane. That's good. But yeah, I mean, this is like, he's got just to hang out with your wife too, man. I don't know, man. That's one thing I have to say to Comrade Thompson. Like, man, he's hanging out with your wife. You yeah, have, I mean, we don't were have both... to have a podcast with Arn Anderson where Arn Anderson was like, let me I disagree. The Arn Anderson town podcast town is town which one has of... the best egg salad sandwiches. I I've think the Arn show might be art. Asked. I got news for you because it is not interesting, but it is. No. But the things they're talking about are so interesting. I swear Arn Anderson there could an make like killing Arn a man Anderson boring. In, shut the fuck up, Dylan, and listen to my goddamn words. Never. He there's an episode where Art Anderson talks about ending his literal life with a gun in a hospital, and it comes across so boring. Do you know how I hard that. that is to make that boring? <laughs> Dylan, yeah, he's, that quiet, be he's a quiet man. He's a quiet. Conrad Thompson to started a podcast. I don't know what you. Uh, maybe it's like I don't know. Maybe he. I don't know how. Because, like, aren't Ric Flair and Arn Anderson not talking? I hate that I kind of know anything about this. I mean, we all know so much about it, and um, they are not talking. The rumor is... Not talking. It's um, to do with Ric Flair's behavior. And it's like, yeah, no shit. Okay. Yeah. Arn Anderson... Arn the rumor Anderson is, is Jeff Hardy Arn Anderson drugs. is a man who I guarantee has never cheated on his wife, because that would mm-hmm. involve talking to more than four people. Like, he's like... <laughs> and he will only... His sons all count as... Uh, he only will talk to one son at a time. Mm-hmm. Dad, Bro- Brock, get in the room. Randy, get out. Yeah. Um, I have dinner four times: once with your mother, or once with Brock, and once with Randy. I don't yeah. know if Randy's things. Yeah. Fourth dinner is by myself in the garage, and I yeah. drink it. That's I the real dinner. dinner. I like to drink my dinner. I look at the garage door and I notice what problems there are with it, and then I fix them before I go to bed. That's how. I, I want do. you to know this. I would go to a strip club with Arn Anderson so fast because that would. Um, I don't think that the the health regulations would allow a woman dressed like that to to mm. to spin around on such a pole. I'm gonna ask if they. I'm gonna ask them to switch this song. It's too loud. Excuse me, you just charged me fifteen dollars for one bottle of Coors Light. That is not how much that costs. You are <laughs> gouging the customer. I would like to speak to your manager, and they bring out like a giant intimidating security guard, and then uh, Arn Anderson starts whistling the the Horseman theme. Does the throat cut and then just tries to spine buster him and but it doesn't work but that's okay. Slips all Arn's the discs got a gun. in his back. Yeah, exactly. yeah, he slips all the discs in his back. Luckily, Arn's got a pistol. Yeah. Arn Anderson really strikes me as someone who believes in the Second Amendment. Like I got news for you about Arn Anderson. Arn Anderson, oh, buddy, pull out the Glock, armed Anderson. Yeah, that was the greatest thing that happened to that podcast. And Arn Anderson was like, "Yes, that was a promo I did." What is, I don't understand what the pro what where is that from? It was from Cody Rhodes when he's the the storyline where Cody Rhodes didn't have killer instinct. And he said, you're the kind of guy who is someone comes up to your car with a knife and you go, oh, take it. I'm the kind of guy where I some guy comes up to my car. I pull out the Glock, put it to his head and spray his brains all over the pavement. And then as soon as he went, as soon as he went, pull out the Glock, everyone lost their mind. And this is like, imagine, I don't know how to compare it because it was like, First wave, everyone hating John Cena hatred, and as soon Arn said, "Pull out the Glock." Every, every, everyone watching that show, no matter how out of shape they were, took their shirt off and went, <laughs> "I would do anything for you, sir." Yeah, like Arn Anderson killed then, Trump. Mega has a new king, and he. But is that's the one of the enforcer. fucking AEW's missed a couple shots, and like not major ones. 
But, like, just through, like, you can see they have tunnel vision in certain ways that they, like, book yeah. things. They're not really malleable. Like, like, everyone talks about the day of storylines with WWE. And there is an advantage to that. But when you map everything out ahead of time, like AEW clearly does, it's like Malachi Black could have been a super face. Um, basically, everything around the Cody Vortex for a minute was like Malachi Black could have been a super face. You could have had Malachi Black, like, beat Cody Rhodes and yeah. then... Cody turns on Arn and Arn Arn goes, you won't fucking you want to show me kill I'll fucking show you killer instinct and then like get somebody to be his proxy. I completely agree with you, and that's probably what they should have done in this. And then probably just screams like, in Cody's face like you know what I did to your dad, I'm gonna fucking do that to Of you course. Now. And I, I bet you that's what they were building to, but then it was either TBS not letting Cody be a heel, or also probably Cody not wanting to be a heel. We're gonna see. Everyone is acting like Cody didn't have a hand in his creative. Guys. Cody was steering the ship of Cody segments in AEW. Oh, no, yeah, that's what, yeah, totally, yeah. No, I think so, everyone knows that he was, he was the fucking I know, but everyone's acting piece. like, well, he's going to get to the WWE and they're going to screw it up. And it's like three fucking weeks ago, everyone was talking about how Cody was a fucking tumor on Dynamite. Mm -hmm. And now we're all acting like he was Kenny Omega CM Punk. And that, the, but it was the a must watch. Mess but it was a different thing on the show than anything else. This is not about Conrad Thompson, whatever. This it was a different show on anything else because everything you knew, everything in AEW, the crowd would play along with to some point, even if they didn't really believe in it. Like the mm. crowd is still booing Malachi Black, and even though he's in like a stable of goths, and it's like, if there's ever been anyone that should just be a loner fucking character, like this is your Karate Undertaker. You got handed it, and now he's like in a stable of goths, which is like whatever. But like people want him to be a fucking badass goth karate man, and they're not letting him. Versus Cody Rhodes was like the only thing where the crowd would be like, fuck this. We want, we're going against the script. You know what I mean? And yeah, it was like a different thing every, every uh, segment. Well, it was also because Cody and like, I only went back. I'm not following AEW. I'm sorry, everyone. Don't worry about it. I just don't care about the fucking elite. Hey man, I have. A three hour every day, and I mostly dedicate it to dark. I don't even watch Dynamite. I just watch job matches because it soothes me. I like to see finishing moves. I like to see entrances. I like That's that. all I like. I like there was that a guy. Part. I don't I like know that for you. I don't know how this slipped through, but on dark this week, I'm not making this up. There was a guy who I was like, this must be like a who could win this match, but it was supposed to be this guy's debut, and he came out to the theme song for the show. And I was like, I've oh. never seen a guy debut worse. Then, that is awful. Imagine a guy who's like, this is his big fucking, and he was dope. I forget what his name is, but he, he looked like he sold hockey cards at a flea market. Like That's he did so not funny. look good. Please, this guy, it's his big opportunity. Please welcome. Do we have a theme song for him? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Theme song to this show. Because mm -hmm. fuck that guy. What's his, uh, what's his gear? It says ignore this all over his yeah, body. Yeah. His gear actually is advertising a Tim Hortons franchise. <laughs> yeah, he's only advertising regional coffee chains. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, he's advertising for the coffee time at St. Clair and... Mm. Oh, oh, that Irish whip. I can't see the cross street. I can't see the cross street. Two for one Let pizza tattoo on his back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh my God, he's still sponsored by Golden Palace. This is crazy. Let's talk about StarCast and then let's fucking kick this cunt in the pussy. But... Starcast was uh that was pretty transformative. It was very transformative in that it gave me the opportunity to watch Bret Hart bully Tom McGee and then make fun of someone who had the tape of that match. <laughs> I have attended yeah, a Starcast. Yeah, that was the unveiling of the Bret Hart fucking Tom. McGee. I was there. I was fucking there, baby. I was fucking there, and I will say this about that: a couple of things. One. Bret Hart is just, whenever I talk about not liking Canada, Bret Hart is everything I don't like about Canada. Why are you complaining? Um, some people were mean to me once, and now I got a lot of money and I keep cheating on my wives, but those people shouldn't have been mean to me. It's like, fuck you, Bret, you fucking wang. And now in the, I don't know. All that was really, really cool. Uh, it, re it was the best version of a fan convention I've ever been to. They really, really appealed to the internet, old school fans of it all. I watched Tully and Magnum have a big chat about their match, their like United States title match inside of a cage that was actually really, really interesting. And Tully mm -hmm. comes across exactly the way you thought he would. And Magnum TA is exactly who you think he is. And you're like, wow, you guys, you guys were 
very much just yourselves, not even the volume turned up? Because Magnum TA always is like, well, I'm here to earn some money that I will then use to raise a nice family. And Tully's like, well, I'm here to light a woman on fire just so I can get an erection. Does anyone here have some cigarettes I can break in front of you because I just want to waste your money? I told my daughter it's just a word and she can say the n-word to whoever exactly. she wants. Hopefully I told my daughter you're going to be raised by another man because I'm not going to be shackled by no bitch. <laughs> uh, also, obviously, the original StarCast was a the first AEW event was All In was for part of that. September 4th. All Out. It was All Out. Or no, it was, all yeah, all, all In and now it's called All Out? I can never it was remember. All In and All Out. So anyway, yes. But then anyway, that is, that's like th Conrad Thompson a guy who bought some wrestling memorabilia and then paid Jim Cornette too much to tell some stories about, like, is I'm now, sure is now Bobby Eaton's dick. He's now probably making $500,000 from wrestling podcasts cash. Well, no, this was more my point. Is responsible for the new WCW and still does a podcast with a guy who runs both WWE main shows. That's crazy. Like, That's he is insane. literally, he stands at the crossroads of modern wrestling. Yeah, that, that says everything about wrestling. All you have to do is be, uh, I think in Vegas they call them whales, and obviously Conrad Thompson is way too smart to be a whale. He's clearly turned everything about wrestling into something that makes him money. Like Bruce Pritchard says something like, and then I had a coffee on my they shoe. Start making and he'd be like, much. coffee on my shoe shirt. Yeah. Coffee on my shoe shirt. Yeah, but let me you, ask you, you this question. On a shoe shirt. Let me ask you this question. Go for it. What does his mug say? Uh, his mug says, let me stop. Yeah, because our mugs say this is jizz. Our mugs are better than the Conrad Thompson mugs. <laughs> we have something that we've never said on the show, and it's a, it's fucking jizz mugs. We have definitely said this on the show. That that's jizz. Yep, this. But like this is jizz. This is a black. This this is this is clear. This is filled with jizz. <laughs> but that says a lot about where Conrad was. That like, hey. We can draw 10,000 people to an indie wrestling event. Obviously, that gets the attention of Tony Khan. But it says a lot about that, that they would be like, okay, these three people are taking a huge swing, Cody and the Young Bucks. Let's attach ourselves to Conrad Thompson and make it a yeah. whole fan fest. And like, basically, basically, they used the model of um, WrestleMania fan access, what that used to be, which turned into like WrestleMania weekend, obviously. But they were like, let's make our own because we want to be apart from WWE and not get any of that rub. And, and they, they actually Conrad very Thompson fucking did that. They very cleverly did something else as well, which, which is, is we're going to do WWE fan access, but we're going to sort of adjacent brand it. So it's not associated with us in particular it's just on the same weekend so in theory we can get wwe stars which is why they almost had the undertaker and kurt angle for the double or nothing weekend yeah which is conrad thompson being such a smart businessman of being like no i'm not associated with them i'm associated with me um sorry i was checking up uh bruce pritchard returned to wwe in 2019 so they're yes september so that's September 2018, and um, he returned to WWE um, in 2019. I'm trying to find an exact date. That's why the Jumping the Shark is 2017. Is It's when, um, what happened when starts, because it's just like, come on. Yeah, and it's a really interesting thing. Like, I understand putting filling your plate and, like, kind of, like, not thinking, like, oh, fuck, I should do other things, but, like, I mean, maybe he's like, maybe the mortgage thing's self-running. I don't know. But anyway, the guys were, the guy, Conrad Thompson, for whatever you want to say, of course, he's deluded his thing because like, it's not about the art of podcasting to him, which why would it be? I guess if you're looking from that perspective, it's just about fucking making a ton of money, which he does because he has 95 different fucking shows. And yeah. like, I'm going to try, all right, how, what is it? Ad free shows is their thing. Do they still sell t-shirts? Conrad Thompson t-shirts. If they and do, like, it was so motivating for me where it's like not motivating, but it's like I've always like if you want if you do stand up comedy, another thing you can do to gain a bunch of money is just sell silly T-shirts at the end. And I've always been like, what the fuck would I put on a T-shirt or something, though, and thought of it and then not done anything with it because it's like a pain in the ass to lug around to shows and whatever else. But then literally Conrad Thompson just putting like whatever the fuck on a shirt and then selling it.
I've been thinking about just putting stand or uh, putting stand up comedy on a t shirt, and then I was also thinking of putting the name John just on a black t shirt in white letters. That's sick. Thompson T sweatproof. That's fairly funny. Pro Wrestling Tees has a I hate Conrad Thompson shirt. Merch for which he's definitely weeks selling. With Eric he's definitely selling those. They have sixty nine different Eric Bischoff shirts. Sixty nine. Do you guys want to get nobody? Why? Do you guys want to get a nobody gives a shit shirt from the Eric Bischoff show? I'm proud. I don't get it. This is just the Conrad equals ratings. Sure, why not? I hate Conrad Thompson is a eighty Conrad movie shirt. Too fat for a Lamborghini. Peripheral media. Like if they just sell anything, good for them. Anyway. Reading off fucking Google is the last thing you guys want to hear. What's the best thing about Conrad Thompson? What's the worst thing? He gave us something to wrestle with the early years. The worst thing about it is he's going to die in front of a trophy chest with replica belts talking to (laughs) Kurt Angle's wife. (laughs) We're starting our new podcast, Wrestling with Addiction, starring Kurt Angle's wife, new wife, Jeannie. She Mm -hmm. is sobbing and Kurt cannot be found. I'll tell you this. There's one Conrad Thompson silver bullet that I think we all want to see, which is when Cody Rhodes essentially or inevitably gets out of um, AEW or sorry, WWE, that shoot interview, that podcast will be a good six months. Oh, boy. But then they have to preload T-shirts. Hard on the Young Bucks. He's a very he's a business 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 boy. I don't know, it, but that yes, but that's he like an, you know what he also is. Is he someone that goes? Uh, I need this podcast to make money quick. I was a mm. I was the face of the Go Big Show, and now I'm the face of Go Home Now. Um, so I better yeah. hot take it up, and I guarantee he's gonna. He has hot. two TV shows on the network of the company that he just left. Yeah, but I don't think sure he's staying thing. on those TV shows. There's no way he's staying. He's on staying that. on Go Big Show for sure. It, no, but has that been announced, fuckface? Yes. Oh, well then, never mind. I'll shut yeah. up then. But like, obviously, why wouldn't WWE want that? Where it's like we fucking punked you off, bitch. But like, yeah, I think the best thing about Conrad Thompson, Conrad Thompson changed podcasting and changed wrestling, which is insane. Yeah, but that's the thing that the people that changed the Conrad world Thompson are is like mortgage, the good um, Joe Rogan. <laughs> I, yeah, that sounds because he's like. Is he a bit shifty? Of course. Of course. He's in entertainment. Why not? But like help making sure what people think is the greatest wrestler of all time. Certainly a guy who's in the top four, no matter who who you are and what you think. We're talking about Jeff Jarrett, right? Jeff Jarrett doesn't die poor and alone is its own good thing. And he got a wife out of it. He really, he came out of wrestling better than any wrestler ever has yeah i've never heard anyone do this well out of wrestling i'm also going to say this about rick flair it's like him uh, steve austin and the rock i'm fine if Rick will never let wrestling. wrestling alone i'm fine You're with it fine with that okay yeah don't try and steal macho man's wife fucko this in is that what real fucking happened. story also he'll be in our tournament of terrible oh, people that conrad no thompson or rick flair rick flair yeah of course conrad seems like he will maybe have a Ted DiBiase story where it's like he embezzled a bunch of money from a charity, but I, I mean, the Ted Conrad's DiBiase never story stepped out of line. Uh, it was Ted DiBiase's son who did it. And oh, and Ted DiBiase t- as well. Oh, I didn't realize the last time Ted I checked DiBiase it. Ted DiBiase Jr. stole more money than his dad did, but his dad did steal money from a welfare fund attached to a church. Yes. Good. Good. <laughs> Mel, he truly is the million dollar man. That, money, yeah, he's money. living the gimmick. I mean, you're playing. If you're the prosecutor, you're playing that song. Like, before we begin, I would just like to play Mr. DiBiase's favorite song. <laughs> money, money, this money, is, money, money, money. There is no way. And then him. Everyone's got a price. Oh no, Ted. Oh no. Do you think the, the prosecutor was like? Wait, Rick Rude and Mr. Perfect are dead? Okay, well, he is the only suspect then. Like, yeah, exactly. all, all the other bad guys are actually dead. <laughs> uh, well, we know that the perpetrator uh, uh, demanded to tell his plan to a bald man who has a bunch of skulls in a briefcase. Unfortunately, that bald man died, quote-unquote, because this realm 
is evil enough. Uh, so <laughs> how frustrated assume... do you think is Conrad Thompson when they have family dinner and he finds out Ric Flair had like 70 bitcoins for a while, but then took them out in just scotch at a bar in like 2009 or something? I bet you he's so angry. I think about the guy who bought uh, a pizza for 20 bitcoin. I'm like that guy. That guy. That guy better enjoy that fucking pizza. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Well, that's the yeah. I guarantee Conrad. Th the worst thing about Conrad Thompson is when Ric Flair gives a little window into his finances and how much money he had at one time. And Conrad Thompson has a full panic attack in the bathroom because he's nice enough to excuse himself. <laughs> um, right, no, the worst part was when you had how much money in 1994? <laughs> he yeah, like why didn't you just pay eyes. some taxes? Good Lord. Yeah. Cause that's not. Woo, I'm going to leave everyone on this because it is tax season. And so all of my friends, cause I'm in show business. So many people just don't pay taxes. And I always have one friend who gets the letter of like, Hey, we found you. It's been 14 mm -hmm. years and you appear on television in the country you're supposed to pay taxes on. Mm -hmm. Can you pay us your taxes? And every time they're like, man, it's so like difficult. It's like, yeah, because this whole system is designed for you to do it for one year at a time, mm -hmm. not 13 years on a go, you wild, wild men. Yeah, uh, I don't have any receipt. Oh, man, that's a nightmare. Anyway, now I'm Conrad Thompsoning from this imaginary person. Thank you very much, guys. We'll be back next week with Jeff Hardy's third WWE run because we use our imagination here. Jeff Hardy. This is one, another Jeff Party. This is actually when it's old Jeff Party, though, because like they're like, go to rehab, and he's like, nah, I'm going to go to another thing where they let me jump off shit. Yeah, I mean, I could go to rehab, or I could fucking tell you to suck my dick. Yeah, here you go. It's not even hard anymore. Try and get it hard. You can't. It's impossible. Also, can we? Ju can I just say this? I I, say I don't like how so Sting jumped off on through that table, the balcony dive. Mm -hmm. Why did we do that? And now, so quickly, wrestling Twitter's already like, we all are agreed Sting's dying in this ring, right? And we're all like, yes, let's joke about it. Yeah, of course. I mean, he the fucking got the buckle bomb from Seth Rollins that almost destroyed his whole body, and he's still like doing balcony dives like he's New Jack and he's sixty something. I love it. I love it. He's just like I just I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm stupid. You get into wrestling because you're a bodybuilder and there's nothing else to do, and then you flash forward forty years and you're literally trading your golden years for. Let's get. Some, I mean, I don't feel that bad. Let's for get Sting. some neck. He has so stuff. much money. Sting has been on television. And he's a Christian, and he doesn't drink, and he loves to fucking work the lats and the traps. So good. Oh, he certainly him. does. That guy know, and he know what he knows how to do. He knows Wait, how to man. whisper into Darby Allen's ear. Where I'm like, he didn't say anything, but it looked like he did. Darby, don't tell her you'll kill yourself Darby, Darby, if she doesn't suck you off. Do stop tweeting, Darby. Darby, stop. You're gonna delete Twitter. Instagram. Trust me. Darby, everyone. Do that promo where you endorse Florida's politics. Yeah, exactly. Darby, let's not do your uh, your angle known as I'm Ron DeSantis and everyone else is trans people. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That is it now. Bye-bye. Thank you. Uh, Follow us on Twitter, Instagram. Sting Whisper Review. Or review all the time Sting Whispered in people's ears. Let's go with Uncensored 97. Sting Whispering in Scott Hall's ear. One day you're going to break your hip and have three heart attacks. <laughs> and I'm the one that did it, Scott. I'm gonna, you're gonna job to me in the match of life. Goodbye. <laughs>